Okay, here we're going to be looking at blood splatter velocity pattern inter in interpretation, meaning how quick was the blood traveling and how is that going to look when it impacts a surface. So first off, there's blood splatter velocity classifications. Um, and just as a note, F slash S is feet per second. M slash S is meters per second as far as a rate goes. Low velocities can classified mainly as your gravity forces only. Medium velocity is like the force of a hammer swing. And high velocity would be a gunshot producing a fine mist of blood. So first off, our low velocity. Um, the spot diameter is mostly between 4 to 8 millimeter range. Common low velocity situations are free falling drops due to gravity only, uh, cast off, dripping, splashing, or art arterial spurting would be all kind of fall under the classification of a low velocity blood spatter. This uh, splash pattern, again, a volume less than one milliliter, subject to low velocity impact, could be thrown or tipped. Visual characteristics include a large central irregular area surrounded by elongated peripheral spatter patterns. Kind of see here is an example of a water drop, and again, while water has slightly different properties than blood, this gives you just an idea of what might be occurring uh, to develop a uh, spatter pattern for blood. This is kind of what it would look like in a cartoon-like image um, in the sense of for a low impact uh, velocity. Here's a blood simulated squirted from a syringe at a height of one meter. And this kind of gives you again that low velocity kind of cast off like look to it uh, and how things may kind of be interpreted in that sense. And there's a little zoom in version of that. And again, this is all low velocity. So you can see a lot of the blood staying together, droplets being very large. In this case, it almost looked slightly raised as well from accumulation of blood. And this was a fair amount. This was five milliliters squirted. This kind of gives you an idea of that kind of that cast off, that kind of direction there, that kind of spattering um, that has occurred. So this, again, can be used for calculation of convergence as well as many other things as far as determining where that blood originated from. Now, the arterial spurt pattern, this is blood exiting the body under arterial pressure because your heart is producing that pressure. So your arteries in particular is having a lot of pressure of blood. Well, if there's a laceration that occurs, there can be an arterial spurt that occurs. These are large stains with a downward flow and vertical surfaces. Waveform from pulsation flow may be apparent. So what does that look like in this extreme case here? This would be an example of arterial spurt. This area here would be a, a spatter pattern in general. But this shows that arterial spurt where there kind of could have been a laceration in the extreme case, say, to the neck region. Then we get to medium velocity blood spatter. So the blood source is subjected to medium velocity impact. Again, we're talking a little bit faster here. Um, spot diameter is going to be smaller than our low velocity. It's going to be mostly in the one to four millimeter range because it's traveling at a quicker rate of speed. So this is the point of impact at 15 centimeters in front of a vertical um, target surface. And here's a six inch ruler for comparison and looking here at a medium velocity blood spatter. Okay, and here we're looking at high velocity blood spatter. Uh, this is going to be producing a fine mist with spot size less than 0.1 millimeters. Small mass limits to spread to about one meter, and some large droplets can reach further. Um, this is typically evident from like a gunshot or the black spatter from an entry wound or the forward spatter from an exit wound or as a result from high speed machinery. You can see here the difference uh, visually that that high velocity blood spatter definitely has. Now gunshot back and forth spatter, so here we have the gun being fired. Uh, that blood stained uh, foam held just above the target surface. So the bullet passes from left to right just above the sheet. Bullet's traveling in this direction. Bullet enters the foam. Um, it's gonna exit the foam here. And you have your back spatter entry and you have your forward spatter to exit. And this is ultimately where the bullet's going to end up. Uh, so it gives you this idea of how there's differences when it comes to initially contact with an object and how it's exiting an object. And again, this can be very important when looking at a wall or determining which direction a gun was fired or determining where it may have impacted a particular surface. Gunshot, the back uh, spatter here originates from the uh, entrance wound, passes back towards the weapon and the shooter. Seen only at close range of fire, areas to analyze would be inside the barrel, exterior of the weapon, a hand, the arm, the chest of the shooter. This kind of shows you the black spatter on a, a steadying hand and how fine the mist can be um, on that particular hand there because this is, again, high velocity. 
The gunshot forward uh, spatter here originates from the exit wound. So here we have the impact of the object. In this case, we'll say it's the head of the individual. Uh, and then here we have the kind of forward spatter here from the exit wound. It passes forwards in the same direction as the shot. Remember, the bullet's traveling in this direction. Uh, it produces more blood than the previous back spatter. Uh, it can be seen at any range of fire. Uh, investigate nearby surfaces, such as the object, the person, especially the wall or area behind the victim, if that warrants it in the particular case that you're investigating. This high velocity blood spatter, uh, forward splatter and target is placed 15 centimeters behind the point, high velocity impact. Forward splatter, the closest view here, and this kind of gives you that appreciation for those that fine mist that occurs and the varying amounts based on the entry or the exit wound there.